Hello students, very happy to conduct this session. We are resuming our class today. I hope and pray every one of you and your family members are safe under God's protection. Let us together pray. I would like to say our prayer, Lord's Prayer. I want everybody to repeat with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the heaven. God, give us day, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Students, we all know our situation. It is the need of the hour to think that your future is, is now in your hands. We do confess that these virtual classes is not the same as a real classroom situation. But then, students, kindly keep in your mind, we need to create all situation into an opportunity. I repeat, we need to create all situation into an opportunity. That's why, all the issues, all the situations, all the events, why people convert pannu. So once again I repeat, we need to create all situation into an opportunity. I request everyone to sincerely indulge in these classes without giving any excuses. We do accept your situation when it is real and truthful. But we do not try to give excuses for your laziness. This is high time to develop your knowledge. You can do even if you're sitting at your home, you can do wonders and you can also enrich your mind by listening all the videos of online classes. Last but not least, I would like to end with a small phrase. Do not procrastinate. I repeat, do not procrastinate. Procrastinate. Do you know the meaning of procrastinate? Yes. Postpone pandra, thalli pooradhu. Nala ilan the padikalam. Eleven o'clock mala padikalam. Will you poet on the padikalam? Aprama pathiklam. Aptin rada. Procrastinate. So I repeat once again do not do that because successful people will not procrastinate. With this lovely note, we will move on to the chapter. We are in the second chapter. Already we have covered the human reproductive system. We have covered female and male reproductive system. We have understood the structure and respective function of each organ. We are going to study about the gametogenesis and menstrual cycle in today's session. Part 1 I will cover gametogenesis and part 2 I will be covering menstrual cycle today. Uh, as a recap about the gametogenesis, I have already given you a link in the previous classes a beautiful video about how the gamete is formed, how sperm and ova is formed. And today we are going to see what content is given in your textbook and descriptions about menstrual cycle we will see in today's class. Gametogenesis, it is a process of formation of gametes, that is sperms and ovary from the primary sex organs in all sexually reproducing organisms. This is the definition for gametogenesis. Meiosis play the most important role in the process of gametogenesis. We have two types of cell divisions, isn't it? One is mitotic cell division and the other one is meiosis. Meiosis is a reduction uh, re division, wherein the 2N condition is reduced to N condition. We have 2N condition chromosomes, sets of chromosomes. But finally, after meiosis, we have only n set of chromosome and that is a speciality of meiosis and this meiosis division is taken place in gametogenesis we are going to see how it is formed let us first focus about the spermatogenesis spermatogenesis genesis refers to formation sperm refers to sperm so spermatogenesis refers to formation of sperm we will see how this sperm is formed Spermatogenesis is the sequence of events in the seminiferous tubules of the testes 
that produce the male gametes, the sperm. During development, the primordial germ cells, so these are the germ cells, from this germ cells only, the sperm are produced, migrate into the testis and become immature germ cells called sperm mother cells or spermatogonia. So first stage, germ cell, okay, and migrate to the testis and comes immature germ cells and it is called as a sperm mother cells or you can call it as a spermatogonia. So this is the first stage in the inner surf surface of the seminiferous tubules. So all this taking place, all this process is taking place in seminiferous tubules. Now the sperm mother cell or you can call it as a spermatogonia begin to undergo mitotic division at puberty and continue throughout life. Mitotic division, division you know, uh, it, it just divides into two with the same restoration of the same set of chromosome that is mitotic division. At the first stage of spermatogenesis, the spermatogonia, I mean the mother cell, migrate among sertoli cells towards the central lumen of the seminiferous tubules and become modified and enlarged to form primary spermatocytes. Now, we have a transformation of spermatogonia into primary spermatocytes. This spermatocyte, which are deployed with the 23 pairs, that is 46 chromosomes, some of the primary spermatocytes undergo first meiotic division to form two secondary spermatocytes which are haploid with 23 chromosomes each. So meiotic means reduction division. This spermatocytes is 2n undergoing meiotic. So 2n undergoing meiotic means n condition is formed. Two Spermatocytes are formed which is having a haploid set of chromosomes that is 23 chromosomes each. Ungal Purida, spermatocytes on the 2n, that is 46 circle, and that is renda period mode, 2n condition, renda haploid haploid, that is 1 on the 23, in on the 23. Is it clear? Secondary spermatocyte undergoes second meiotic divisions to produce four haploid spermatids. So, in the layer, rendu were the one primary. Other secondary spermatocytes. In the secondary spermatocytes, further undergo a second meiotic division. So, in the N condition, undergo a second, uh, second meiotic division to produce four haploid spermatids. The spermatids are transformed into mature spermatozoa. This is the By the process called spermiogenesis. So, I would like to show this in the schematic representation. So, I, I think it will be clear for you. We have three phases here. I am representing with the cursor. You can clearly see in. First one is multiplication. It is just multiplication. Okay. Multiply. The n condition is restored. See, two n conditions same in here also. Okay. So, it is multiplication force phase. And next is a growth phase. Okay. And finally, maturation phase. Three phases you have in this division, spermatogenesis. So now we have spermatogonia, the mother cell, okay, sperm cell, having condition 2N, undergo mitotic division. It just undergo, you will have primary spermatocytes, okay, these two primary spermatocytes. And this primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 1. So when it undergoes meiosis 1, it divides 1 spermatocytes, divides into 2 haploid cells. We call it as secondary spermatocytes. Is it clear for you? So we have 2 haploid secondary spermatocytes. This secondary spermatocytes further undergo meiosis 2. Further, it undergoes meiosis 2 and it forms 4 spermatids. So, now this spermatids will change or it will mature into spermatozoa by the process called spermiogenesis. 
So if at all I ask you what is spermiogenesis, can you tell me? Yes, it is the formation of spermatozoa from spermatid. Okay, it is a process in which spermatozoa is formed from spermatid. is called as spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis na formation, spermio abina sperm. They're all very simple. So same kind of division, set of divisions is taking place in oogenesis also. So adhiyum paathitu, apranama padikilam. Is it clear? So oogenesis, here we have a a mother cell called spermatogonia here in uh, ova the mother cell is called as a ogonia here also first phase in multiplication phase mitotic cell division will takes place which gives you a primary oocyte is it clear yes so primary oocyte having a condition 2 and condition further undergo meiosis 1 when it undergoes meiosis 1 it is divided into two haploid cells first one we call it as a polar body very very small and second one we call it as a secondary oocyte okay this secondary oocyte further undergo meiosis 2 and you will be getting a two haploid cells first second polar body and next one is a single ovum okay so the result a net result from one ogonia you get one ovum from one spermatogonia you get four spermatozoa so there is a difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis a slight difference is there but the divisions is same first it undergo meiotic division second it undergo meiosis 1 and finally meiosis 2 all the divisions are same but there is a small variations in the uh, secondary o secondary polar body and the secondary oocyst here you have a first polar body and this is not involved in the um, fetus formation and the second polar body also is not in the involved in the form or fertilization of the fetus formation you know, only the ovum which is having n condition which restores the n uh, haploid number of uh, chromosomes is involved in the formation of a fetus is it clear for you now we'll come to the content we were here till spermiogenesis and now sperms are finally released into cavity of seminiferous tubules by the process called spermiation after the spermatozoa four spermatozoa is formed it is released into the seminiferous tubule and that process is called as a spermiation so once again what is spermiation sperms which are released into the cavity of seminiferous tubules is by the process called spermiation so there is quite difference between spermiation spermiogenesis you must understand the meaning of it and write relevantly when it is asked the whole process of spermatogenesis takes about 64 days so to end complete the entire division okay it takes 64 days at any given time different regions of seminiferous tubules contain spermatocytes in different stages of development the sperm production nearly remains constant at a rate of about 200 million sperms per day so you must rem remember that how many how many sperms are produced per day it is at the rate of 200 million sperms per day so this will be probably asked in a one mark question you must remember that spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty so when this uh, process starts you know that at the maturity at the puberty both for the male and female we have puberty at that stage only this reproductive organ become active this is what you call it as a maturity or you call it as a puberty yes spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty and it is initiated due to the increase in the release of gonadotrophin releasing hormone gnrh by the hypothalamus we have already covered this uh, glands about the hypopituitary gland we have studied in the 11th standard we know about what are the uh, hormones released by the pituitary gland and what are the effects on the organs we have already studied so i believe that this will be easy for you uh, 
So GnRH gonadotrophic releasing hormone acts on the anterior gland. So from the hypothalamus you get GnRH. This will act on anterior pituitary gland. And what is produced? It influence or stimulates a secretion of two gonadotrophins. So from anterior pituitary gland we are receiving two types of hormone. One is follicle stimulating hormone. FSH and another one is luteinizing hormone LH. What is the purpose or what is the function of FSH we have already studied? You will remember that. Okay, FSH stimulates testicular growth and enhances the production of androgen binding protein ABP. important. So FSH and the androgen binding protein. Serotonin cells that helps in the entire formation of spermiogenesis. FSH. Now, LH is another. LH is another luteinizing hormone. It acts on the Leydig cells and stimulates the synthesis of testosterone. Male is important hormone, testosterone. And this testosterone produced in the Leydig cells stimulate. Okay, that is inactive, that is active, that is active, luteinizing hormone. So once again, as a quick recap, we will see the entire uh, hormone regulation about the spermatogenesis. First, hypothalamus releases gonadotrophin releasing hormone 1. Second, it acts on anterior pituitary gland. Yes, third, anterior pituitary gland secretes 2 gonadotrophin, that is 1. Follicle stimulating hormone and two luteinizing hormone. We will see third one. What is the function of FSH? So, what is the function of FSH? It stimulates the testicular growth and enhances the production of ABP, which helps the ser serotonin cells and also help in the formation of sperm. That is spermiogenesis. And what is the fourth one? What is the function of LH? It acts on the Leydig cells and it or synthesis, stimulates the synthesis of testosterone, which is in turn stimulates the process of spermatogenesis. So, hormone is a very, very important regulating factor. If this hormone is not formed or released at a particular time, there will be a delay in the puberty. Okay, there will be a very many diseases or very many disorders may occur if this hormones are not functioning properly or it is if it is secreting in a less quantity also there will be problem if it is uh, secreting in more quantity also there will be a problem okay so we have understood the importance of hormone regulation in spermatogenesis let us now move on to the next topic structure of human spermatozoa so far what we have seen we have seen the process of spermatogenesis we saw what are the stages three stages we saw and the divisions we saw and finally we have four spermatozoa okay and lastly we studied about the hormone regulation of spermatogenesis and now finally we are concentrating in the structure of human spermatozoa i would like to show the picture and then we will come to the content of the textbook so you can see the structure already you would have studied in your 10th standard from 10th standard you are drawing this diagram i believe so the, the, this will not be uh, complicated for you i hope that you know all the parts so we have three parts one is head second middle part and the third one tail part so this is the typical structure of a human sperm you must draw the diagram and practice children with the label also you must draw and practice Head part consists of a nucleus and above the nucleus you have a chemical substance called acrosome. It's a, it's a part in which uh, enzyme, enzymes are stored here in the anterior part of the head. And this part is called as an acrosome nucleus and you have a neck region which connects the middle piece with the head. That is called neck region and middle piece is referred what is there present inside mitochondria is present inside you know mitochondria is a powerhouse of energy yes it just liberates so much of energy and final part is called as tail and this tail is a help in the mobility of the sperm we know that so these are these are the important structures and now we will see what 
is given in our text. The sperm, human sperm is a microscopic flagellated and motile gamete. Okay. The whole body of sperm is enveloped by a plasma membrane and it is composed of a head, neck and tail. So these are the three parts. The head comprises of two parts namely acrosome and nucleus just now I have said. Acrosome is a small cap like point structure present at the tip of the nucleus and it is formed mainly by the Golgi body of the spermatid. This is very important. If you have a Golgi body, spermatid or Golgi body is acrosome. Okay. It contains, so what it secretes? It secretes hyaluronidase a proteolytic enzymes so what is the purpose of this uh, enzyme this pop popularly known as a sperm lysine okay in the um, enzyme ke peru lysine sperm lysine or so, uh, which helps to penetrate the ovum during fertilization you know that the fer during fertilization the sperm enters and uh, enters the egg isn't it that uh, egg contains a, a thick wall that wall will be broken down by this lysine. So this lysine is helpful to break down the wall and the nucleus is entering into the um, ova in order to fertilize. So this is a very important aspect. So you must keep in your mind. The nucleus is flat and oval. The neck is very short, is present between the head and the middle piece. It contains the proximal centriole towards the nucleus, which play a role in the first division of zygote and distal centriole give rise to axial filament of the sperm. In the end, we will see the end centriole, one proximal, proximal na male anterior, first of all. In the end of the end of the end, it plays a very important role in first division of zygote and distal centriole. Okay. And what is the other uh, centrioles uh, function and it gives rise to axial filament of the sperm. So, either end of function, first one is division of zygote, zygote and uh, second one is distal centriole which gives rise to axial filament of the sperm. So, this may be asked, twist, twisted and asked in a one mark question. You must remember that. The middle piece possesses mitochondria spirally twisted around the axial filament called mitochondrial spiral or Nibenkern. It produces energy in the form of ATP molecules and the movement of sperms takes place. The tail is the longest part of the sperm and is slender and tapering. It is formed of central axial filament or axonema and and an outer pro protoplasmic sheath. The lashing movement of the tail pushes the sperm forward and the human ejaculates about 200 to 300 million sperms during coitus. Okay, this you must remember. It is estimated that around 60% of the sperms must have normal shape of which at least 40% must show a vigorous motility for normal fertility. So for normal fertility, at least 40% should have a vigorous motility. Then only fertilization takes place. Out of so many millions of sperms that is secreted, only one sperm will reach at the egg of the ovum. That is the speciality. If at all two sperms are fused, then twins are formed that we will discuss in later stage. And now here you have a wonderful, um, interesting uh, fact. The sperm is the smallest human cell and the ova or egg is the largest human cell. Remember, the smallest cell is sperm and the largest cell is ovum. We will see oogenesis. Oogenesis is a process of development of similarly the female gamete or ovum or the egg in the ovaries. During fetal development, as certain cells in the germinal epithelium of the fetal ovary divides by mitosis and produce millions of eggs called mother cells or oogonia. Male and spermatogonia and patho, inga and the female and the ugonia. Similar, na, same. Na. No more ogonia are formed or added after birth. Okay, the ugonia and the womb revision, yer can away, corn the porcumode, cutia cumode, the ugonia cells yerk. Okay, yes, the ugonia cells starts dividing and enter into prophase one of meiotic division one to form a primary oocytes which are temporarily arrested at this stage. The primary oocytes then get trans surrounded by a single layer of granulosa cells to form a primordial or a primary follicles. So from the primary follicles only, uh, we will be getting 
ova a large number of follicles degenerate during the period from birth to puberty so at puberty only 60000 to 80000 follicles are left in each ovary so ivula ovaries ivula follicles ovary ku le irk yerkanave irk okay one more interesting fact then we will go to that out of million million eggs women possess during birth only about 300 to 400 will ovulate before menopause ipo dhan padichom namba thousands kanakla irukku 50000 kanakla irukku ana evlo mature ai veliya varudha apdina 300 to 400 over only it ovulates before menopause so on the other hand male produce more than 500 billion sperms in their lifetime so totally how many sperms are produced in their lifetime male produce 500 billion sperms this can be asked in the one mark question so note it down the primary follicles get surrounded by many layers of granulosa cells and a new thicker layer to form a secondary follicle here the structure is also de- is described here a fluid filled space the antrum developed in in the follicles and get transformed into tertiary follicles and now the thicker layer gets organized into inner the inner thicker interna and an outer thicker interna externa at this time the primary oocytes within the tertiary follicle grow in size and completes its first meiotic divisions and form secondary oocyte we have already seen that isn't it it is an unequal distribution because a polar body is formed another one is haploid is formed is resulting in the formation of a large haploid secondary oocyte and first polar body the first polar body disintegrates disintegrate na abbe adu absorb aidum illana adu vandu disperse aidum During fertilization the secondary oocyte undergoes second meiotic division where it produces a large cell and the large cell la namu solrom ova and the secondary polar body the secondary polar body also degenerates so all the first polar body as well as the second polar body will degenerate okay the tertiary follicles eventually become a mature follicles or a graafian follicles if fertilization does not takes place the second meiotic division is never completed and the egg disintegrate disintegrate na enadu apdiye adu karanju poidrathu okay so if there is a fertilization is not taking place appo egg enna aidona apdiye adu disperse aidum at the end of gametogenesis in female each primary oocytes give rise to only one haploid ovum we have discussed already now we will see the structure of ovum human ovum is non cleoidic elicithial and microscopic in nature okay its cytoplasm called ooplasm contains a large nucleus called germinal vesicle the ovum is surrounded by the three covering namely inner thin transparent vitelline membrane middle thick zona pellucida and outer thick coat of follicular cells called corona radiata between the vitelline membrane and membrane and zona pellucida is a narrow perivitelline space we have you can see the structure you can see here so first cor- corona radiator next layer zona pellucida and further interior you have vitelline membrane and the inside you have a nucleus and this nucleus is surrounded by germinal vesicle and now this uh, plasma is called as a ooplasm what happens these are called as a primordial follicles this primordial follicles is transformed into primary follicles the primary these are comes under the growth phase primary follicles is transformed into secondary follicles secondary follicles undergo tertiary follicle state wherein the graafian follicle becomes a mature and it releases the secondary oocyst so this process of giving out the ovum is called as a ovulation okay this ovum is containing a haploid egg and this is the sectional view of ovary we are seeing here and simultaneously one month one ovary will be active you have two ovaries left side and right side um, uh, ovulate this month and uh, followed the next month the left side ovary will be active is it clear for you i hope this uh, is sufficient for part 1 uh, and now uh, we will take a break and uh, we will come back uh, for the next topic menstrual cycle i will catch you there